Question 6 says, a 100 gram aluminum calorimeter contains 250 grams of water. The two substances are in thermal equilibrium at 10 degrees Celsius. Two metal blocks are placed in the water. One is a 50 gram piece of copper at 76 degrees. The other uh, has a mass of 68 grams and is originally at a temperature of 100 degrees. The entire system stabilizes at a final temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Determine the specific heat of the unknown second sample. So on this one, I'm going to do like I did in the in the actually in the last question. So I've got a a Q1, a Q1 that I'm going to call aluminum. This is the aluminum box uh, that that the aluminum calorimeter. I've got a Q2 that I'm going to call water. I've got a Q3 that I'm going to call copper, and I've got a Q4 that I'm just going to call question mark. I don't know what it is, um, but what I do know is that that Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4 equals zero. And so just like in the last video, I can set up a table, mass, uh, specific heat capacity, final temperature, initial temperature, and I can even do delta T from those numbers, and I, and I can set up a table with aluminum, so I've got an aluminum column, I've got a column for, for water, I've got a column for copper, and I've got a column for my unknown. And so I plug in the mass, so it gives the mass, you, you have to make sure you convert it to kilograms, so 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.05, and 0 0.068. Then the, the specific heat capacity, 900 joules per kilogram Celsius, 4,186 joules kilogram Celsius, 387 joules kilogram Celsius, and this is we don't know. The final temperature is 20, 20, 20, and 20. It all comes into equilibrium at 20 degrees. Now the initial temperature um, is 10, 10, 76 and 100. I'm getting all of this straight from the question. Now the change of temperature, the change of temperature is going to be 10 degrees, 10 degrees, negative 56 degrees, and negative 80 degrees. So at this point I can even calculate my Q values uh, because the the Q or the energy transferred by heat is equal to the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change of temperature. And so um, we, we can say that the Q for aluminum is 900 degrees was transferred into the aluminum. For water, 10,465 10, joules. For copper, it's negative 1,083 point six joules and for the unknown sample we we cannot calculate it because we do not know what the what the heat capacity is and so we set up our equation where uh, q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 equals zero and then we can solve for q4 so q4 being our unknown sample equals negative q1 minus Q2 minus Q3. And so we can expand Q4 to be the mass of the unknown times the specific heat capacity of the unknown times the change of temperature of the unknown and that's going to equal negative Q1 minus Q2 minus Q3. And then we need to figure out what this is, so we divide by the mass and the temperature of the unknown. So the, the specific heat capacity of the unknown is equal to negative Q1 minus Q2 
minus Q3 divided by the mass of the unknown times the change of temperature of the unknown. So I'm just going to slide this up. And we can substitute in the numbers that we have. So the, the specific heat capacity of the unknown is equal to negative 900 for aluminum minus uh, 10,465 for water minus negative 1,083.6 for the copper divided by the mass of the unknown which is 0 0.068 times the change in temperature which was negative 80 degrees Celsius. So my, my zero here looks kind of ugly. That's 0 0.068 times negative 80 on the bottom. When you plug in your numbers you should get a positive number that's 1,889.963 joules.